get your message out. What are you for? Not, not just gang up, because if you gang up on Donald Trump in a, in a, uh, in a debate, then obviously you're going to have sympathy for him. And, and that's not the, the object here. Just make, give your own message. All right, I heard that over the weekend, and I thought Meghan McCain would be a great guest on this. How does a daughter feel about her father uh, not being called a hero by Donald Trump? And uh, here you are, Megan. I'm glad to have you. Your dad was more or less Thank saying, you. don't pile on Donald Trump. Leave him alone. Let's move on. Let's focus on the bigger thing, your issues, blah, blah, blah. What'd you make of that? I agree with him. Uh, I would like to say first and foremost, it's 468 days until the election, so there's plenty of time for all the other candidates to I get their message out. I thought it was 467. Are you sure 468? 67, 67, 68. Right. Potato. I'm pretty sure it's 468. Uh, I, I digress. Uh, you know, Donald Trump right now is looking like a martyr. He's looking like someone who is saving the Republican Party for its from itself, and we really need to let the other candidates come out and and get their message across. The problem is uh, the message that the other candidates are serving right now, it's just not resonating with people in the way that Donald Trump is. Again, there's plenty of time for this to happen, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's so much time. What I'm interested in right now, I'm a millennial voter, I'm a millennial Republican, 50% uh, of millennials consider themselves independent, 67% of millennials voted for Obama in the last election cycle. We can't let uh, Hillary co-opt the millennial vote, we can't let Hillary co-opt uh, the woman's vote, the minority vote, and if we have a candidate like Donald Trump, who is preaching to a very specific, very small audience, that's exactly but what Megan, will happen how do you know other that? candidates. How do you know that? Whatever he's doing right now is working. He's resonating the polls. And, and wait a minute. Every, every time he has said something, sorry. even when he <laughs> attacked your father and, 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 you know, he tried to dial it back a little bit, but went after Mexicans and, you know, all the comments there. Every controversial thing he said that would sink any other candidate might have sunk your dad if he had said the same. Doesn't happen to him. In fact, he's, he's now leading in Florida. So almost everywhere with you see Donald Trump, with, with, I understand that. But, 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 but that was unthinkable right after the remarks he made about your dad, and yet he's more popular now than he was then. I'm not negating that Donald Trump has a huge audience right now, or not a huge audience, he has a following right now, and what he's saying is resonating with people, but his negativity uh, polls nationally are, are huge. 60% of the American public has a negative perception yeah, of Donald Trump. Yeah, but 50% of the American public has a negative elections, impression of Hillary Clinton. Believe me, I see what you're saying, Megan. I understand your frustration, especially concerning your dad, but what, what I think people are missing in, in looking at the Trump phenomenon is confusing the messenger with his message. And his message, his frustration and anger over trade deals where we always seem to get the shorter end of the stick and repeated failures in Republican and Democratic administrations, that might be something that's, that's, that's reaching out to independents as well. You don't buy that. I, I don't. I, you know, he was saying that he thought Donald, uh, Sarah Palin should be part of his cabinet. Uh, Donald Trump and Sarah Palin are debatably the most polarizing figures in American politics, and I think we need someone That's who's going to unite the party. That's not what your dad says about we Sarah can't Palin. Look fractured. Your dad doesn't say that about uh, Sarah My Palin. father and I disagree on many <laughs> things, Neil. I'm not my father's minion in a lot of ways. No, but, you're not. No, you know, you're not. I, right now, we're so we're so far away from from you know election day in a lot of different ways, and I'm not going to sit here on your show and say that what Donald Trump is saying isn't resonating in a very real way. And I think what the other candidates need to do is realize that his anti-Washington, anti-politically correct message that he is serving is really something Ameri the American public is, is really receiving and liking. Well, I think, I think the other, other candidates, candidates should take that heed, Megan. That's all way. I'm saying. I think the other candidates should take heed because his direct approach or clear approach, and you're right, this is something that has to be, you know, targeted and nuanced as time goes by, maybe not, uh, is, is, is working. And the Rubio. others are, look like duds by comparison. Right? Yeah, I agree. And again, the Fox News debate that's coming up on August 6th, well, I, I'm, I'm so Wait curious to see There's how There's a Fox it News debate out. coming up? When? August 6th. There is a Fox News. Uh, no, you're right. That's going to be tell all and be all, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And again, I think the other candidates right now, Donald Trump is sucking all the oxygen out of the room and they have no one else to blame but themselves in the sense that, that you need to come up with a message that's going to resonate. I, I'm a big fan of Marco Rubio's. I'm a big fan of Lindsey Graham's. The message they are selling right now is not resonating no, uh, in mainstream America. With them. And so in let, let me ask you, Megan McCain, Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Could you support him? Oh, God. 
I, I'm, I'm voting Republican all day, every day. I, I mean, it, it'll be a cold day in Gila Bend, Arizona, when I vote for Hillary Clinton for anything. But I, I just, I, you know, I'm a young Republican. I really want to see a united party. I really want to see someone who can send a message to young okay. people where they can come over and take a second look at the Republican Party. And I'm 100% certain Donald Trump is not the person to do that. Megan McCain, you are your own your own woman. I appreciate that. Megan McCain <laughs> joining us right now out of L.A. Thank you, Megan. Take a look at this. This tells you a lot. The Mom is University poll is created just to activate uh, just, just look at Patrick Murray and his tweets. There couldn't be a less objective poll about Chris Christie in America. The guy's an advocate. He's a liberal advocate. So I, I don't, I've never paid attention to the Monmouth poll in New Jersey. I've never paid, and, and by the way, it's the Monmouth University poll. Anybody who don't care, I think nationally people are on the edge of their seat waiting for the Monmouth University poll to come out. And please, stop. Can you imagine how difficult that would have been to hear if you were right next to Governor Christie had those yellow letters not been there to transcribe exactly what he was saying? But what he was saying in all seriousness, Governor Christie came out against a Monmouth poll that shows him not making traction in, in New Hampshire. Um, and, and other polls sometimes confirm that others do not. And I will say this, uh, having studied these Monmouth polls a lot in the past, even within the state of New Jersey, they have been wrong a lot. So uh, Washington Examiner's Tim Carney on that. Uh, you say, Tim, regardless of whether they've been right or wrong, it's generally bad to go after the pollster. Explain. Well, it's, it's, it sounds like complaining. It sounds like pointing fingers. I mean, I know that a lot of Republicans do get uh, mileage out of going after the media and their criticism. They say, oh, they're not covering me enough or they're covering me in a biased way. But in general, if you have a message to sell and you're talking about it, you're going to do better than if you're just pointing fingers at a pollster. He could just say, look, I'm not following the polls or you've got to look at all the polls or the only poll that counts is the one on Election Day. Any of those things. But it sounds like sniping. He's aiming, he's punching down. Well, well, I think what he's that, saying, though, Tim, and Hillary this is where, uh, like uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this one because other polls have shown him gaining some traction in New Hampshire. Now, the yes. Donald Trump phenomenon is real, and it is hurting him. It's hurting all the other guys, uh, every one of them. But the one thing I did notice in this poll that maybe the governor wasn't aware of is that he is their number one second choice. So, so I found yes. that rather revealing. What do you think? And, and, and I do think that it's, it's really important when, when we in the media cover polls, there's easy to just focus on the, on the headline number. Yes. Sometimes they, there's not enough focus on, well, bigger sample sizes are going to be more accurate. There is going to be a margin of error no matter what. Are we talking likely voters or registered voters? This far out, you don't have a great way of measuring likely voters. And the, the main and most important thing, and this was contained in some of what he was saying there, is you have to look at the aggregate of any polls and the trend lines rather than simply an individual poll. That this is kind of responsible journalism on polls. Any one poll has to be seen as a snapshot that may be inaccurate. Yeah, but I think his argument was that certainly within the state of New Jersey that the, the, they have notoriously ranked his performance lower than of others. And, and I have seen that in New Jersey. I don't know if that's a bias, but it is a statistical quirk that sometimes bears mentioning, right? Well, sure, and, and he's got a history with him. They are a, a New right. Jersey-based pollster. Um, but when I do these you know analysis, I don't Jersey look guys. at, you know, this guy or yeah. this guy. Yeah, right. you, try, right. I, you try to aggregate all the polls and look at it, and, and that, that's the argument he could make. Hey, pay attention to the bigger picture. I'm You're doing right. better in New Hampshire. And personally, I think Chris Christie will have a boom in New Hampshire, and I expect to see him uh, really in contention there. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's filling those town hall meetings up fast. Not very few do what he does. Uh, Tim Carney, thank you very, very much. And he much. performs I, I, on stage very well. Indeed, yes. indeed. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. You know, a lot of people are worried about this dust up within the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, but specifically in the Republican Party. What's going on with Donald Trump and the, and the name calling? And everyone says, you know, we keep fighting like this. We will never, ever get a guy in that house. Oh, contraire. We've had much rougher inter-party squabbles, and they've gone on to win. Does anyone remember 1992?